Good morning, folks. We've got a number of Earth-focused science stories to hit today. We'll touch the ice, ionosphere, magnetosphere, and the pole shift ongoing at Earth. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were very quiet. The dark coronal hole on the north is bringing enhanced solar wind, and the bright active regions on the south remain fairly calm at the moment. The incoming active region at the limb does appear to have arching fields outsizing the entirety of the complex sitting at Earth-facing longitudes. The solar wind is getting back up off the floor as well. The enhancement in solar wind is beginning as top left the yellow line hitches up and then back down. And at the hitch, the purple plasma speed and green ion temperature of the stream below that begin to rise. KP index bottom right is all quiet, but the stream could intensify in the coming days as the lowest latitude portion of the coronal hole is just now facing Earth. Quick note here as we remember November and the ice fears we tempered as the 50 centimeter ice thickness bias was revealed between the ice sat 2 and cryo sat 2. Today, we show that the depth measurements might be even more off. They took a look at the Amory Ice Sheet in East Antarctica and discovered that modern algorithms underestimate the depth by 30 to 70 percent. That's generally going to be way more than 50 centimeters. That's an underestimate on IceSat 2, which was under-biased compared to CryoSat. Up next, folks, we know that the equatorial ion fountain of Earth sends the particles up and out in helical spiraling vortex patterns, but that's not the only place to find these ionospheric vortices. So let's leave the equatorial zone and come to high latitude where the solar storms induce these eastward drifting tornadoes of electric current. Given that we know the global electric circuit connects the ionosphere to the ground in helical vortex currents, it's not surprising that the induction of solar storm energy triggers vortex-driven geomagnetically induced currents, the ones we worry about in the big solar storm, the ones that can take out the grids, communications, and critical infrastructure and we dive a bit deeper on that topic. It helps to know all the ways, and to what extent, a solar storm affects the planet. In addition to induction, there are electrically additive processes that light up the total electron content and surge the critical frequency of the ionosphere. And folks, the latest on how bad it can be is free to read from the AGU and describes how there is nothing stopping a perfectly formed CME from hitting Earth like hasn't happened in modern times. Many latitudes, are simply unprepared for what's coming, especially the overly dense and lower quality grids of poorer countries. But in reality, with Earth's weakening magnetic field, it's not even going to take what it would have taken just a few decades ago to strip us of our way of life. And in that vein today, we've got confirmation of three things. First, the North Magnetic Pole's high end of motion now exceeds 70 kilometers per year. It did indeed have that breather in 2016, as we had guessed based on the space weather data back then, before the 2017 re-acceleration over the Pacific sector. And also, folks, we've known that the South Magnetic Pole is moving much more slowly, having already left Antarctica and being way ahead in the race. It's trudging along at only 5 to 9 kilometers per year. The next magnetic field acceleration may instigate that southern magnetism as well. Folks, Reality is still stranger than fiction. The current Earth shift is going to be more incredible than any movie or novel or what most of us can even imagine. And if you missed yesterday's show and the scoop on what theater of the gods the elites are playing out for the world right now, maybe go back and check it out. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.